actually I came here very early today specifically to speak on this one just because that's what I believe in. Um, I don't have any clearance from my board, so I'm not saying that I'm representing them. What I do have is my son, who went into prison with an eighth grade education, attention deficit disorder, and hyperactivity. He came out, and one of the things that that program taught him was to always back up what he was doing, to, to check and make sure he's doing everything right. And so the first place that we had to go was to the parole officers. Oh. Are you testifying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I am. Monitor. Hold on. All right. So the first place we had to go to was to the parole office. And I asked to go into that parole office with my son, and they would not allow it. He's straight out of prison. He's, he's a big boy. He can take care of himself. So OK, so I didn't get to go in. Subsequently, when he would go to parole, he asked if he could record what they were telling him. He has attention deficit disorder. He does not remember things. He was not allowed to record. He was not allowed to bring anyone into that parole office with him. So he has <coughs> nothing that he can go back on to make sure that he's doing what he's at, being asked to do. They, they were so paranoid that my son was going to record them that when he went into their office with EEGs surgically glued to his head, they ordered him to remove them. And he refused. In refusing to do that, they could put him back into prison. What are they so afraid that he is going to record? We typically, and I've spoken with Department of Corrections, I've spoken with Department of Safety, my son has spoken with DOC, Department of Safety, our local police department. I have this little device right here that I leave on the desk and I record here. My son says, my name is Joseph Brooks and you're speaking on a recorded line. I've never heard one police officer say, no, you can't record me. And at that point, I'm very comfortable speaking with that official because I know that they're going to do what they're supposed to do. And if they don't do what they're supposed to do, we've got proof of what we said and what they said. Please pass this law. I remember back when it was a one-party consent, back in the 80s. If, if I'm on that phone call, I have a right to have a record of what I'm saying and what's said to me, especially if it can affect my life, and in my son's case, his freedom. This is a suggestion. Experience that same thing again. Sometimes a note from a doctor will make all the difference in the world. So they have it? You want to know what made the difference? What? Helen Hanks. <laughs> that works too. No, Helen Hanks, the Department of Corrections. Yes. He still is not allowed to record. And I still believe that he needs the right to be able to record two days later when he doesn't remember. You saw my son testify. Did, did you realize that what he said wasn't consistent in when he was talking? Because his mind wanders. And he had a computer screen in front of him. If your mind wanders and your life and your safety and your freedom depend on it, the the department should not be allowed to stop him from recording. He needs it. It's, it's a disability, but we can't even prove it. And they don't care. They're a public servant. My taxes pay their pay paycheck. Let me in there with my son, or let him have my little recorder that's not hurting anybody. And yes, that's behind closed doors. I have the opposite problem. I have a, a granddaughter that lives with me. She's autistic. She remembers. Yes. <laughs> Too much. much. <laughs> Any questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Joe, if Joseph Brooks would uh, put down the bill number. I don't. I didn't hear it. 1546. This is the earlier bill, 1546. Okay, so I did submit one. Right, this is the recording one that we got suspended. Yeah. You want to go talk? Am I out? Uh, no, not, not yet. And right. Oh. oh. <laughs>